Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about something called Unity Events. And Unity Events allows you to do a series of actions which would have previously had to really hard code into script. Now, you can see Unity Events on things like buttons. So on buttons on UI, you can see the on click and you can see there's a list which is currently empty. You can click on the little plus and you can add a specific runtime event to the list. Now, if you've not got a UI, you want to be able to reference this in the script. So let me give you an example. I've got a script here that I've got on a trigger event. So when I walk into the box collider, which is orange, I just set an object equal to true. So as you can see in my play mode at the bottom, I walk into it and that is equal to true. Now, the thing is, if we wanted to do so many more actions, we could, you know, write that into this script and we could just do whatever. But the problem with that is it's always going to be hard code to this script. And if we've got this on this script, particular script could be on multiple uh, game objects it, we might not want the same functionality on each game object so we might want to do different events on different types of objects that we have this on so what we can do is we can start by using a namespace at the top saying using unity engine dot events with a semicolon so now to reference the actual unity event itself we can write at the top of the class square bracket serialize field private unity event and we can specify the name of the event which would be we could say it's my trigger and then what we can specify is my trigger dot invoke which invokes the actual action that we're going to do and this allows us to do multiple actions based on this so now what we can do is we can go back in the inspector, take a look at our object, and you can see that my event now has a bunch of actions that we can add to it. So we can just, we can take the box and we can specify actions that it will use. So let's say that we add an action to it so we can add an action at runtime. So really, I've got another class here, which is just called cube appear. So what we can write here is we can just write a public void and we can just call this activate cube as a method that we're going to use and in this class we can just say that serialize field private game object and then my cube and we can specify that my cube dot set active is true so we're doing it in this script so we can have i could have 10 other scripts which do 10 different things or a script which is now in this case we could have another public void which is you know activate sphere for instance and we could have some code in here which is we'll just write a quick debug line as our example and what we could do in our specific actions we can go back on our whatever object we want to hold this script on so for instance, we could just create a new empty game object, reset the transforms, and we just call this something like our cube manager, which is something that is just going to control the logic that we have on it. And the, the cube that we want to make appear is this one here. So we can go back to our trigger, drag our cube manager onto there. We can say that we want to go to the cube appear script and we want to do the actual method, which is activate cube. If we want to do something again, we can add the same thing or it could be a different object with a different script and we can just reference and say we want to play activate the sphere so we've got two different actions on one trigger and like i said we could duplicate this trigger here oh now this trigger has a certain type of actions this trigger here we can get rid of one of the actions it doesn't need to have this action so we can just split this up into different use cases so we don't need to use it all of the time so I'll just get rid of this now and you can we can press play and when we're in the game we expect to walk into that trigger and you would see the red thing appear and we had the debug which was make the sphere appear too. So it was just a simple way to reference with the namespace of events, reference the unity event and then just use invoke to reference the actual event or the action that we're going to take and then within your object you can reference as many actions as you want on a per object basis and specify what type of method you want to be able to execute so this just makes it easy to do refined events and different actions really easily
So hopefully this helped you out and added another tool to your arsenal. So be sure to check out my Patreon, my Discord and all my great assets on the Unity Store. So thanks very much for watching and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Cheers.